Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Short Form Aversity podcast. Today, we will talk about sustainability, net zero, and circularity in the pharmaceutical industry. Not few. To tackle that field, I do have with me two experts in the matter, Sebastian and Arne. Who are they? Sebastian is working as a corporate sustainability manager at Ipsumit in Burgdorf, Switzerland. Arne is our head of service and sustainability management at Short Pharma. But today, both are not here to represent our companies. Both are here on behalf of the Alliance to Zero. Alliance to Zero is a cross supply chain initiative founded by several companies along pharmaceutical injectors value chain. Having said that, I want to give a very warm welcome to both of you. Hi, Sebastian. Hi, Arne. Hi, Neos. Hello, Neos. Hello. So let's start and maybe Sebastian, let's start with you. So what has been the idea and the motivation behind forming this supply chain initiative called Alliance to Zero? Yeah, when we as Ipsumet uh, have promoted our Ipsumet Zero Auto Injector with net zero emissions, we realize that this is only a small fraction of the package. So the problem is how we work as an industry um, because a single company cannot realize industry change because it needs to fit like a wheel in the overall metrics. And therefore, if you want to develop a circular so solution, we need to first understand the overall industry problem. Therefore, we need to zoom out from a product perspective to ecosystem perspective. And this is how you can understand the needed change for the individual parties. Okay, thanks. So you mentioned representation of the supply chain as an expected success, success factor for the Alliance. Can you comment on how this idea is implemented within the Alliance to Zero? Maybe now to you, Arne. Yeah, the value chain um, is implemented by the representation of the different companies. We have various different business models in there. We have, for instance, companies supplying primary packaging solutions like Detweiler and Shot Pharma in there. With Ipsumate, we have the device components. But we also have completely different business models with, for instance, Haro Höfliger and Kerber Dividella, who are bringing in the equipment perspective, the perspective of the machine manufacturers. And um, with Shriner Medi Farm and Kerber Rondo, we have components that play a role in the secondary packaging. And with uh, Sharp, we have a company that brings all those things together because they run the services where they do the fill and finish operations. And uh, finally, if you look along the venue chain, we also have to recollect everything to organize the end of life. And that's where Health Beacon comes into play with patient adherence and collection solutions. So by this composition of the Alliance, we enable to have a good overview on the industry-wide challenges and also the opportunity to conceptualize a net zero future. In general, the focus is on, on companies that are directly interacting with pharma. And we also had discussion about, shall we include API? But that would add a very different perspective with low overlay. That's why API manufacturing is currently out of scope. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, Sebastian, has it been difficult for, for you to find companies to join the Alliance? Yeah, the pharmaceutical industry is responsible for more than 5% of the global carbon emissions. So we have to act now and every company is aware of that. However, if you compare our business with other sectors, we are lagging behind and uh, most of the companies we approach are aware of this fact. And therefore the initiative was immediately welcome and we did not have to push the companies. Um, all of the companies we approached immediately uh, joined in and also we want to have a group of like-minded companies who are self-intrinsic motivated and developing a joint vision of facilitating that zero transition was a quick and easy exercise in the beginning but now we are moving in the more challenging part um, towards execution this is where we are currently 
Thanks, Sebastian. So, um, Arnim, now back to you. Sebastian just mentioned that it was yeah, pretty easy to find members to found the Alliance to Zero. If you look back to this first year, can you also conclude um, going the first steps was an easy experience? Of course, it has been extremely easy. You have eight companies coming together, all have a shared vision, but you need to organize how we work together. And so that means, for instance, we had to set up a framework to work together. We had to fund a registered association, and that's a fully new experience to all of the people that were involved. We had to decide how do we work, what's, what's the way of working, we, so we started regular committee meetings with representative of each company so that we enable steering. And then you have a vision, you have a framework, but what to work on. So we had to see how can we pave the road towards actions and how can those actions make a difference. And that has not been, been easy. Um, so what we then did in, in order to organize orientation, we said we need two, two things. First, we need a common language. So we were working on a guideline. We need a common language. So we were working on a guideline, the product carbon footprint. And then based on that guideline, we also said we need to go into a first baseline assessment. And maybe adding to that, as we have created this first baseline assessment um, with all the different articles and operations included in an 1 ml auto injector, this helps us very much for orientation and to find uh, the emission hotspot. In parallel, we also started with working groups on topics that are obviously not yet well understood and will require to be part of the problem, such as, for example, an end of life working group where we're tackling challenges like recycling and uh, end-of-life treatment of our products. One central statement I remember from your webinar was that if we as an industry want to have net zero injection devices in the future, circularity is a must. Why is this, Sebastian? Yeah, if you look at the emission distribution, we were clearly observing that more than 50% of the related emissions are associated with materials and also the end of life related to it. Therefore, we need to aim for circularity. Why is that? Because in circularity, uh, the reusing materials is an infeed as raw materials for the next life cycle. And this way, circularity can enable us to reduce our hunger for new materials and everything that is kept in the loop requires no end of life. Hence, circularity is extremely powerful to realize a game-changing effect, taking a majority of the raw material and end-of-life contributions out of the equation. Therefore, more effective than application of reduction measure. Okay, so this sounds uh, to me logic and great. What holds us back? Yeah, it's a change in logics how, how we work. If we look back to how our industry has evolved, there has always been the wish to uh, reduce the patient risk and any contamination. And that's why we're now in a very linear world where most of the contamination mitigation strategies are relying on single-use plastics. And so we need to change in those logics and set up the capabilities that enable us to work differently, require less plastics and so on. But um, this is not easy. And in particular, taking also care of the end of life is something that is new to everybody. And even if we are aware that we all need to work more circular, then still we need financially viable business models. And that's probably the largest trick. How do you organize a circular material flow that requires no charity-like addition of money into it, but that you maintain the residual value in those materials. Thanks, Arna. Um, beside the barriers, what are you seeing on the horizon that will promote and, and push your circular vision, Sebastian? 
Currently, it would be challenging to use uh, regranulated plastics from a regulatory perspective. So we need to work towards a regulatory mindset shift. You can see first examples of take back schemes are currently taken off, such as, for example, Novo Nordisk and Johnson Johnson are investing heavily in a global rollout program for, for take back. And the alliance has been a proven contact point. So we are in touch with several pharmaceutical companies, um, but as well, we are also well connected with other associations working on an environmental um, solution. Great. Thanks, Sebastian. So now to you, Arne. What are the other drivers in the footprint beyond end of life and raw materials? Yeah, one that very quickly comes in all the discussions is transportation. Um, but in fact, our baseline has also shown that the contribution of transportation is way lower than expected. Production processes itself. Um, many products are seeing a cold chain and they are produced in clean rooms. So we have a lot of electricity required to operate those clean rooms. And this is where in future we will require a shift to see how can we reduce the energy demand to run those operations and also to convert the electricity source to some green sources, which, which is a key task in particular, if you think about uh, Schott Pharma being a manufacturer of glass solutions um, we need to find new solutions, how we can go away from fossil sources to glass. The interesting about that, that overall conclusion we discussed about the circularity and we discussed now about the need for green electricity. This is more or less like the conclusion of the Alan MacArthur Foundation that, that it's two major things, the conversion to electricity as well as, as circularity. We will need to go to net zero. And if I look back to the beginning of the alliance, we had the discussion, how do we call ourselves? And I was one of the people saying, no, we don't should not call ourselves the circular alliance, which was the initial favorite, um, because our goal is net zero and we don't know whether circularity is really a must. Now, the interesting thing is the results of the baseline have clearly proven circularity is a must and therefore um, I owe a sorry to Sebastian, uh, circular would also have been a good term in our name. <laughs> Funny. Um, thanks for sharing uh, with us. Uh, so it's great to have two circularity evangelists with us today. Um, for you as an alliance, what have been the highlights in this first year? Well, we have, uh, we have had several on-site meetings where we facilitating open exchange between the different member companies in order also to create a joint feeling that change is feasible. And then, for example, the PDA presentation in Basel um, gave us the opportunity to uh, have a keynote talk there. And this opens up new cooperation um, and makes aware education is related to circularity and sustainability in the context of pharma. On the next PDA in Gothenburg, we are also able to design a pre-conference workshop dedicated to sustainability. And with this, we can uh, jointly promote collaboration for sustainable transition in the pharmaceutical industry. Okay, exciting, in particular for just a bit of more than, than a year. So I'm um, looking into the future, um, Arne. So what's now the plan? Uh, how will the Alliance continue? And how do you intend to create traction for your circular vision and facilitate the industry transition? Mm -hmm. Yeah, starting from, from that baseline, we're really digging deep into the key drivers for the contributions we're seeing in the footprint of the, the whole final injection product. And we started developing a change plan with measures that are addressing exactly the, the contributions and we started an alignment with the different companies there and now in the companies we assess the feasibility for what is more this, the homework within those companies plus we started running on the barriers that are overlapping we started joint projects that we set up as working groups within the alliance to zero 
And here we're also looking very much for the cooperation with pharmaceutical companies or with experts in exactly the fields. So it's not only that we want to execute the entire work in the Alliance to Zero, but topic specific, um, we try to bring in the experts. Also academics we're involving, we're having two master theses running with the TU Delft, where we're also looking for the recycling and the disassembly of devices. And in particular, um, my favorite program is then conceptualizing how can the material flow and the business model look for based on collaboration schemes organized by pharmaceutical companies, the disassembly, the rework of the materials so that we in future can really use them as input materials to create new devices. In one addition, we're also setting up a learning curve together um, this is based on, on setting general schemes that are important for our companies to implement the last time we have been working on the SBTI. So it's the chance for us to also continuously learn based on the experiences we have in the different companies, but also based on the open discussions we have in the different companies and partners. Thanks a lot. Um, so with that, we've reached the end of our uh, talk today. Um, thanks, Arne. Thanks, Sebastian, for this interesting talk and explanations. I really wish you great success ahead with the Alliance to Zero. Thanks to the audience for hearing, for being here with us. Take care and bye-bye. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Bye.